Hey everybody, my name is Matthew. I've been with uh, CCUA for three years. Um, I thought we'd talk today about vermicomposting. Uh, we're going through some weird times right now with the shelter in place and everything, but at least we can, uh, which means we'll have a lot of time to hang out at home. Um, I think this is a project that um, we can all do pretty, pretty easily from home. So um, vermicomposting, also known as uh, worm composting, uh, is basically you have a container about this size this one's been going for a few months now um, you can see inside if you want to look I've been putting um, some vegetable scraps in here if you dig down a little bit we can uh, see some worms there here's one right here so this thing is full of worms they're a little bit afraid right now because I just uh, drove them across town and in, uh, in my car and they're probably a little agitated um, so they're all kind of hiding right now. Um, but this thing right now is all that you see that's brown there is, is worm poop, which is a, one of the most nutritious things you can add to your vegetable garden. Um, so today we're going to kind of talk through about how to make one of these um, and uh, get, get it all set up. And um, basically you only really need a bin um, like this or just whatever you have lying around the house that has a lid. Um, it needs to be opaque. Um, worms don't like the light, and so uh, it needs to be to, to be dark in there. Um, we're going to need to put some holes in our bin. You can see on this bin here, I've got some holes drilled along the edge, which allow air to circulate in and outside of the, the container. Um, and uh, we'll need a, a lid for it as well. Um, and then the other things you'll need are um, some shredded paper or cardboard. Um, I've been using just shredded grocery bags or shredded paper. Make sure it doesn't have, uh, some, some of the older office paper had bleach in it, so that's one thing you want to avoid, but I usually use grocery bags or newspaper. That works really well. Um, you'll need some worms, and this is the maybe the probably the hardest ingredient to get. Um, it's a type of worm called red regular. Um, we have them at our farm at CCUA um, and contact us. We might be able to arrange some sort of sanitary little drop off or something of a, of a box of worms. Um, or there's also some resources where you can order them online as well. Um, but it's, they're a little bit different than the, the typical earthworm. They're a little smaller, they have a reddish color, um, and they, they like eating uh, food scraps. Um, whereas I think the earthworm may like uh, probably like eats filters soil it's at a different level of, of breaking down um, the the red wigglers really like um, those decomposing food scraps um, you'll need those two things you'll also need a little bit of grit a little bit of sand let's see we got a bucket around here somewhere oh, here we go um, so we've just got some sort of sandy soil in this bucket um, worms need a little bit of grit to help them grind up their food um, they're like birds in that way. They have a gizzard, and they don't have teeth, and so they just swallow things whole, and that grit inside their stomach churns around and helps grind up the food for them. Um, yeah, vermicomposting, it, it, it's pretty cool. It, 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 it's faster than normal backyard composting. Um, worms will convert your veggie scraps into to usable composts in a shorter amount of time. It's also more nutritionally dense. Um, you can keep it going and active in the winter time too. You can have it in your kit. I had this in my kitchen uh, since November and um, didn't stink at all. Um, so we'll talk about how to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, so let's let's take a look at our some of our first steps here. Um, now, like I said, I'm using these these larger bins, but you can really use anything um, that's opaque and has a lid and that you can put some air holes into. Um, now I use a drill like this to make my holes basically and here I'll demonstrate a couple here just like that the plastic is really soft it's easy to put a hole into this stuff um, if you don't have a drill like this at home I've been trying to think of alternate solutions I think maybe um, a nail or something sharp and just poking it in there or maybe a scissors maybe stick one side of a scissors in there and kind of twist it or something like that might work. We just need some way to get some air into these containers. And again, put the holes in an area that's maybe a little bit shaded. These are just below this lip here to try to reduce the amount of, of light coming into the into the container. 
Um, the next thing you want to do is uh, make sure you have the shredded paper um, available. It, you know, you don't need a shredder. You could just get some scissors and cut it up. The smaller the pieces, the better. Um, it allows more surface area, so the shredded, shredded paper can kind of start to decompose a little faster than if it's a big piece. Um, you can also use cardboard as well instead of the paper. Just kind of the same thing. I probably get a, you know, some pieces and uh, start to kind of rip them up, like into smaller chunks. Maybe even like peel it open, something like this, just to expose more surface area, um, so the the cardboard can begin to break down a little faster. Um, and then the, the step two, or maybe we're on step three now. I'm not sure which, but the the next step is making sure it's all very moist. Uh, so I use a, a spray bottle like this, but you can also just kind of sprinkle water over the entire thing. But it's going to take quite a bit. You're going to start spraying. You're going to start kind of mixing the, you know, turning over the paper. Some maybe about 10 minutes of doing this, um, and you're going to keep going. You're going to keep going. I'm just going to do this a little bit, and let's see. Uh, talk about maybe some problems you might face while you're doing this. If if the bin uh, starts to stink, um, it probably means it's a little too wet. And so you don't want to overwater during this period. Um, one way to tell uh, sort of how, if your bin is too wet or not, is to kind of, I'll show you in this bin, my technique, um, but you kind of just get to the bottom. You don't have to do this with your hand, but kind of scrape back some of the some of the matter and see what the bottom is like if it's right now there's not it's not really pooling there it's moist but there's not any pool of water and that's what you want to see so you want to see some moisture but you don't want to see like a puddle um, if that is the case and you're starting to see puddling you can always add more bedding material more paper um, uh, once you put in your your worms you're probably going to have to wait a couple weeks for them to kind of become acclimated to their new to their new space um, before you start can expect to see results I should say um, let's see what else can we talk about let's talk about like what to add what ki types of vegetable scraps to add to your worm bin um, the things and uh, most things you can add most things the worms will like to eat um, but there's a few things you want to avoid, like any citrus fruits. Um, worms don't like the acidity in limes and lemons and oranges. Um, so you want to stay away from those. Probably add those to your normal outdoor composting operation. Um, they also don't like uh, onions and garlic. Those are also a little too strong for them. So avoid avoiding those things is smart. Um, any meat, I don't want to put any of that in there. Not a good idea. Um, Eggshells are actually, if you grind up your eggshells, like to a powder form, if you have like a food processor or mortar and pestle or just crush them a lot, then they're a good thing to add too. Otherwise, the eggshell pieces are a little too large and the worms can't, can't eat them. The way they eat, remember, is by engulfing things. So unless an object is like small enough that it can fit it in its mouth, it's not going to eat it. Um, let's see here. Oh, right. That's a, that's a good question. Yeah. So, uh, like kind of the amount of food and the size of the pieces. Now, some people kind of go different ways with this. Like some people go to the extent where they're blending up their food scraps and adding them like as a slurry, um, to the worm bin, uh, just to make those pieces small enough for the worms to eat. That's fine to do. Um, it'll speed up the process. Um, but you can also add like carrot tops and you know, the ends of asparaguses and things like that into your bin as well. And the, that, that can work too. So, um, uh, yeah, blending is an option. If you have time, which we probably all have a lot of time right now, uh, that would, that would speed up the process. Um, as far as the quantity, that's also another, a bit of a tricky, tricky point, um, to know how much to add. And I would advise everybody to uh, sort of add just a few things the first time, like add a, you know, a, a banana peel, uh, you know, tomato tops, strawberry tops, you know, some, uh, 
you know, leftover vegetables or something. Just a few things. And watch and see if they get eaten, if they decompose. Um, once that happens, um, then add a little bit more. And so the, the, the rate will slowly start to, to speed up the longer um, the worm bin goes. Um, if you add in too much, it just kind of smothers the whole bin. Like you don't want to have like an inch of crumb of like vegetable scraps are un are uneaten. At that point, if you let that happen, then basically a like uh, types of bacteria and fungus that aren't very beneficial will begin to de decompose those things. It'll start to stink. Um, the worms they kind of compete with the worms a little bit, um, and so you really just want to add. Um, just enough scraps that you keep up with the worm's appetite, if that makes sense. So add a few things. Oh, they ate it. You know, add a few more. Then as the months go on, you'll you'll speed up and you can kind of slowly add more and more things. Um, during a, another quick, good question, I suppose, is like where to place your worm bin, because that matters too. Now in the winter time, it was cold outside. I had this in my kitchen. Um, it was a pretty chilly in our house too. Maybe around 60 degrees most of the time, sometimes in the 50s. Um, and so they were a little slower because of that. They like a kind of a warmer temperature. They probably prefer more like in, somewhere in the 70s or low 80s or something like that. Um, so they'll actually probably speed up now that the, the temperature is warming up. But they also don't want to get too hot. And so uh, during the summertime, um, some of it, you know, you can get away with probably just putting them outside in the shade somewhere beside your house, but maybe down in the basement near in the garage or something might be a, a good spot uh, just to kind of keep the temperature uh, not not in the 90s, um, you know, not in the full sunlight. You definitely want to avoid that. Um, if you do have it inside, you want to um, avoid areas that are like loud or kind of commonly like disturbed and things. Um, now I might have been going against that a little bit with having it in the kitchen, but uh, that uh, they do like their kind of having a peaceful corner off by themselves where they aren't like doors aren't slamming and lights turning on and stuff like that. They seem to like that a little better. A little better. Um, so I've got this uh, bedding about to the right uh, moisture content. It's all pretty pretty moist. There, I don't feel really any hardly any dry spots so it's we're going to call that pretty good um the easy thing about water is you can always always add a little bit a little later so whereas if you get it too wet you probably have to add more bedding um might be a little harder to do um so we've got all that moist we'll add now we'll add some of our our worms here um now again this is uh just a bucket of compost we we've been making compost at the farm for about a decade now that's how ccua began was making compost and we've had red wigglers in there for quite some time um so it was really as easy as just going and putting a shovel in and filling a bucket and we've got quite a few worms let's see it's like they're kind of digging towards the bottom there well here's there's one well oh, uh, there's one right there this does not smell the freshest, guys. I'm glad this is a video chat, because it's a <laughs> I, hopefully I, uh, I'll make it out of this. Okay, so um, I'm scattering some compost in here. I see some worms. Um, I'll try to find some more. Uh, it's also good just to add a, like a fair amount of compost in when you add the worms, so they have kind of some of their home with them. You know they're bringing they're bringing some of their what they're used to along with them, um, and rather than just kind of plopping in them them in there on the paper. Uh, plus, some of this stuff isn't fully decomposed, um, which is where you'll find find the worms because they they are helping the decomposition process. So there's another one right there, little guy. They look pretty chilly. They're moving kind of slowly. Um, and really, is I feel like the more the better. Like if you had a minimum of 20 worms in here, you know that would be a great starter. Um, but the the more the better. If you had 50 wor worms in there, it would be even better. They increase in population pretty quickly. Like once they start going, they will increase their population numbers 
Um, basically until the point where they max out like capacity in this area. Um, they, they reach a certain point where their population kind of levels off. Um, fun fact, worms are hermaphroditical, so each one has both male and female reproductive organs. So you don't, if, even if you had two, that would be enough uh, to start off with. Um, some of these worms you can see their egg sacs on. I think I see one on this one. It's a pretty, let's see if I can find a larger one. Okay, there we are. Okay, yeah, you can see it right there. It's a little kind of collar, a little wider area right there. And that is the egg sac. Um, I even see, there's one baby worm in there. Look at that little guy. Um, so yeah, I think that's good for now. Maybe a couple more handfuls of compost added in there. Just want to give them enough to feel at home in their new area. Um, and then the next thing I would add, again, is this is some grit, some sand. So this is just kind of a mixture of some topsoil and some sand. Um, the pieces are small enough, hopefully, that the worms can ingest them and it can help them digest the, the food in their gizzards. Just like that. And now the one thing I'm forgetting is just some food scraps, but you could go ahead today and just add on some, you know, some whatever vegetable scraps you have, or an apple rind, potentially, or cantaloupe rind, something like that. Um, if you see, like, fungus start to develop, uh, that's okay. It's, I've, I see that especially on the, the banana peels, a little bit of hairy fungus kind of growing on the top of the peel. Um, but it doesn't, it hasn't seemed to be a problem. It hasn't really spread very much or taken over, but if you feel like, oh, that's taken over, I'd probably like cover it up or just take the banana peel out or something like that. Um, one other problem people sometimes have is, uh, flies, um, fruit flies or some other kind of pest, um, that are coming in and out of the holes. Again, you want these holes all along the side. I just did three here, but the more, maybe a total of 18 holes or something like that along the sides but so those holes can allow for flies to come in and out potentially it's not usually a problem but can be a possibility if that happens um you should start when you add vegetable scraps you should kind of bury them underneath um the what you got going underneath the compost um so they won't be accessible to a, to a fly um you also might like put uh, some sort of screen or thin cloth or over the holes just so they can't fly in and out as a preventative thing. Um, but usually isn't a problem. Um, let's see. What else should we cover here? Check my notes here and see if I'm forgetting anything. It looks like most of the worms have kind of squirmed down in into the bedding, kind of hiding. Um... Let's see if we have anything else to, to cover. Um, doo -doo -doo. Oh yeah, the speed. So, um, in harvesting, <laughs> that's probably, that's, that's a good thing to talk about. So, as you can see here, a lot, well, a good portion of this bin is ready to